Look at his shirt. He ain't got it tucked in. You see how people always wear their shirt out? Because you know why we always wore fringes. Read that. Verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that you may look upon it. See that? The reason why we have the fringes, we're supposed to look upon them. You understand what I'm saying, brother? We're supposed to look upon the fringes. Keep going. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. So, you don't have the fringes. You need to start wearing fringes. Because the fringes are going to remind you of the commandments. We're going to show you a commandment. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 6. You already give me you know, it all, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying. Having his head covered, dishonors his head. So you know, the Bible says anytime you're praying to the Lord on the east. So when you pray, you're supposed to face east, right? Towards Jerusalem. That's what really, you're supposed to face Jerusalem, right? Anytime you're praying, or you're reading the Bible, or you're teaching the Bible, you're not supposed to have anything on your head. You know when you go to a courtroom, they tell you to take your hat off? They got that from the scripture because it's a sign of dishonor. When you walk in a courtroom with a hat on, you're dishonoring the judge, right? But we know Christ is the judge, right? So when you hear the Bible, you're supposed to take your hat off. So brother, let me ask you something. So if the scriptures say you're supposed to take your hat off when you hear the scriptures, what you, what you should do right now while the Bible's coming out? It, the scriptures say when you pray or when you're reading the scriptures or you're giving edification, you're prophesying, your hat should come off your head. Since we're teaching the Bible right now, what you should be doing? What should be coming off right now? There you go. You see that? I don't put it back on. Now believe it off, because the scriptures is out. You can put your hat back on when you leave and we start reading, but you see how easy that is? But was that hard? No, right? Just take the hat off when the scripture come out. That's another commandment. I'm gonna show you another one. Give me with the temple. I'm gonna tell you this, brother. I'm gonna see how you take this one. For the first Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Know ye not that you are the temple of God? So, the Lord said, your body is this temple. Remember we talked about me coming up in your crib and I kick my feet up and I do whatever I want? That would be disrespect, right? So the Lord said, your temple, his temple is in you. So we got to make sure our temple is held with respect to the Lord. Watch, read. And that the Spirit of God went up to you. And any man defile the temple of God. Brother, you know how you defile your, your, your temple? Let's see if you know. What a waste to defile your temple. Bro, you know what? Oh, hold on. Let me tell you something. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You got a humble spirit, bro. You got a very humble spirit. You see, I didn't have to even, I didn't even have to ask you. But guess what? You know how come you know that? Because the Lord is dealing with you right now. He's telling you right off the bat. Let me tell you right now. The, the Bible says all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, right? It's profitable for reproof. So for the fact that you can confess to me and you know what you're doing is defiling yourself, then I already know you're very in tune with what's being, being taught right now. And bro, I'm going to tell you right now, and I got to say this and be honest with you. When I see things like that, that scares me because then I really start to ask myself, am I going to see you again? Because I'm not even having to explain to you and you're saying it out of your own spirit. Because the scriptures say the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Bro, your spirit is confessing to what that scripture means. I didn't even have to explain it to you. You didn't even let me finish. So let me ask you something. Go to 1 John 5 and 3. Watch this. Remember we looked up? We're supposed to love the Lord, right? Fear Him, right? You confess what you said. Now watch this. Then we go 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. So, if you love the Lord, 
and you want to keep the commandments, you can't smoke no more, brother. No. I know it's tough. Watch them. I'm gonna show you. Go to Psalm 119. 119 is uh, uh, I did late night. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something, bro. Before before I came in this walk, I used to smoke a pack of Newports a day. No. Cold turkey. I stopped. So if I could do it, bro, you can do it, bro. You know how you know you know how I know you can do it? Because the scriptures say all manner of sin is forgiven. All manner of sin can be forgiven. So if you smoke and you stop, that shows the Lord you love him. Like, Lord, this is your temple. I want to live forever. I'm going to stop smoking. Because you know why? Because I'm an Israelite. An Israelite should not put to not defile their temple. You understand what I'm saying? And you listening, bro, and that's all praise that you're not you're not fucking, you're not feeling away. Because you know what, bro? I'm going to tell you why I used to smoke. I smoked because I had so much stuff going on in my mind and I had so many questions in life. Now I knew the answers. I really didn't need to smoke no more because, okay, I got to do what does say the Lord. But watch this. Read that again. The book of, the book, the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 59. Watch this. I thought of my ways. Stop. David said, I thought of my ways. So guess what, brother? When we leave, when you leave, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. The minute you walk out, Satan is going to go in your mind. Bro, let me tell you, there was a brother I was talking to in Houston about two months ago, and he was doing the same exact thing you was doing. Listening, the brother was listening for hours. I said, bro, am I gonna see you at the school? He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I give you my word, I give you my word. I'm like, bro, from your mouth to God is, you just say you're gonna be there. You know he never came? Bro, that still bothers me to this day, bro, because I, I can still remember his face somewhat. I'm like, damn, I'm not good with faces, but how come I can remember his face? And I'm gonna remember your face. Cause I'm probably gonna ask brother if someone say, hey, remember that brother we was talking to? Does he did he ever come? Did he ever come to the school? I'm gonna ask that question. Because anytime I see a brother real humble, it's scary to me, bro. It really is, bro. Because it humbles me. Cause I don't I, I don't take this truth for granted. I don't I, I could easily be bro, I'm gonna tell you, if I didn't know about this, I'd have been doing the same thing. Bro, I'd have met like like I'd have met at least 10 girls off the rip. Cause I ain't never had that problem in the world. But I can't do that. The Lord said I'm a God. I can't do that. That's not God ways. That's not the, that's not the ways of a king. Right. A king must be disciplined. A God must be disciplined. Right, right. That's why God said, yo, you know by birth, you, you have the capability of doing things you, don't, you can't even imagine. But it starts with changing. You got to change. Read that again. I thought of my ways. So you got to do that, bro. When you leave, you got you to literally think. Let me tell you something, bro. Somebody's going to call you. Somebody's going to be like, yo, let me ask you something. You smoke weed? You don't. Okay, all praises. All praises. Somebody going to come to you and try to derail what we told you. Because that's the way Satan get down. Because this Christ talked about it in Mark 4, the parable of the seeds. He said he threw a seed out. Some people, the bird come, take it right away. Satan come, take it right away. We get that a lot. We'll talk to somebody and they get easily distracted and bounce. But you've been standing here for a minute. So right now, Satan can't really mess with you right now. Because you you in the you in holy ground. So right now, spiritually, you're protected because you are you with us. The Lord said He protects His he, the righteous, but the righteous is never forsaken. So you in a realm of righteous people. Right. But the minute you leave, that's between you and the Lord, bro. I don't know if the Lord got whatever He got set for you. I, but I pray it's, it's it's for life, bro. I pray it's life, bro, because I think about that all the time, bro. Bro, you know how it is, baby. You work at your job. And your people, they don't know how special they are, bro. And a lot of them are gonna die. And you be having good conversation with the brother, but you don't even know he's gonna. You know he's not gonna live forever if you don't change. It's the same thing we dialoguing now. I love my people, bro. But one thing that bothers me is when I, I, I like the Lord is like he'll 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 put you like in a place where you get souped up. Man, this brother was listening, and I think he got it. He's gonna change. You never see him again. You know what I'm saying? I pray that's not you, bro. I pray that's not you. What's your name again? Pat? Patrick? Patrick. I remember that name, bro. Read. I thought of my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimony. He said, David said, you know what? I thought about my life. You know, just what you got to do. You got to think upon your life and say, you know what? I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm already keeping the beard. I'm sure I got, I got the flyer. All I got to do is call these brothers and see what they're about. Let me right. see if these brothers really about that brotherly love. Let me see if these brothers really going to treat me like the scriptures say. They're going to love their neighbors you love thyself. Right. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to see that there. Right. You're going to see that. When you right. go in that school, you're not, you're not even going to think you in, 
You don't even gonna think you're on this planet. When you get inside the school, you're like, damn, I never wanna leave. You're gonna look to long to be there every day, right? But David said he turned upon thy testimony. So you gotta turn, you got, the Lord is showing you that you gotta think upon your ways and say, am I willing to change to gain everything? Am I willing to lose everything now to gain everything in the future? You gotta ask yourself that question. Keep going. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandment. See that? He said, I made haste. I delayed not, so meaning I in front, I'm gonna do the commandments. You gotta ask yourself that question, bro. What are you gonna do? Give me that precept that he said, uh, 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 on this day, choose life or death. Yes, sir, I got you. I'm gonna show you. Because, bro, at the end of the day, look, I'm over here teaching my people, the kingdom is not even solidified for me yet. Right. Because the scriptures say, he that endure to the end shall be saved. I know what's coming. And, I, and I'm afraid, bro, because I'm like, yo, I don't wanna die. To do all this and die? Bro, you see all this going on? This is nothing, bro. All this is gonna be fire, bro. All this. Everything you see, bro, just look at everything you see. Imagine just seeing nothing but bones everywhere. You hear what I'm telling you? Just imagine seeing nothing but fire. Everything is just burning, bro. Jeez, oh. Do you want that? You wanna be a part of that? Hell no. But you know what, bro? It takes, you gotta ask yourself, what are you gonna do? Read that. Then we're going to do Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 19. Watch. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. So, he said, I call heaven and earth this day unto you. So right now, this dialogue we, we have right now, is being documented in the heavens, as well as on earth. Because every brother that's seen you, to bear witness, the angels are watching you too. Watch. Read. That I have set before you, life and death. You see that? I asked you, do you want that e e eternal life? Or you want that eternal death? And I broke it down to you. I even actually, I even shared something with you in my past life. But you say you don't want to feel that. You want life. You want eternal life. Read that again. I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. See that? Choose life. You got children? Oh man, brother. It just get better. What you got, a son, daughter? You got both? Bro, man, now I'm not really hoping, bro, you, I'm really hoping this brother change now. All right. You a family man. You got the mother with you too? Not with you, okay, I understand. But you know what? You still have an opportunity to change and teach your kids, because I'm gonna tell you something right now, bro. I'm gonna tell you. The most precious thing in a woman, in a black woman, I'm gonna say, is her virginity. That's the most precious thing that a father loses sleep. Because when you see your little girl getting older and older, you be like, man, ain't nobody better break her heart. Am I right or wrong? But guess what? The, your, your safety net is these laws, bro. Because your little girl gonna be around other little girls wearing dresses, sisters that wear dresses. Right. She's gonna be constantly in that realm of righteousness. So if a, if a wicked brother try to holler at her, she gonna be like, no. My father told me that if I'm going to marry a man, it has to be a righteous man, right. a God-fearing man. My father changed his life, and he don't want the best for me. But you know how that's going to be able to happen? You got you to gotta change. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.